Hey, I'm the Admiral, and you're in tune with The Boiler Room on H2P Media. If it's the truth you're looking for, stay right here. Admiral, we've had some outspoken people in this chair. Mm -hmm. We got Bajan Farah here every week. Very outspoken. Very outspoken. Yeah. We had Sharyan Norris at one point in time, very outspoken. How um, gonna survive that in all? Good luck. <laughs> we survive anything in that, man. <laughs> that, we, we was in preparation for you. And now we have you here in the chair, right? And Bajans are not known for their outspokenness. They're hypocrites. What? Drives you. They are outspoken in, in their for the, bedroom. For the outspokenness and, in public. And, and at your back. And you have taken a lot, a lot of flack for your words over the years and recently. Only over the years, man. I from fireworks to now. What you what what keeps you going keeps you going? You know, you know, here's what you guys don't know. They send me they send me the music, some of the top Kaisonians in the country. Before the festival establishes, they send the music. Admiral, have a listen to that. Tell me how the lyrics flowing. Tell me how the melodies and stuff are flowing. I don't ever go on there and announce that I just get a song from this body or that body and that body. I work with them to soup down the road. I think they believe that I am honest. Mm -hmm. And any opinion that I give, I don't hate nobody. There's nobody out there that I hate. I don't have a reason to hate any of the artists. Holler back, nobody. Don't hate them. I don't have a, I don't have a, uh, a hate in my heart. I have seen the response to Holler back on Facebook and thing, and I... Some I refuse to read because I encouraged Courtney Brown one time when he was getting a lot of hate. I said, Courtney, go to England. Don't read the negatives. Stick with who you are. Don't read the negatives. It could destroy you. And I operate with that on my own. If I had an opportunity that opened up and Hollaback was one of the artists and I could do something for him to get better, I would be the first person to do it. So I ain't got the time in my life to hate nobody. But the fellas know. That I am honest and I'm gonna tell you. So when you send your song to me, I I would call you and says, Do you want an honest opinion of this, or you want me to tell you what you want to hear? You ever had an interview or a statement that you made on air and afterwards you felt like cha, I went too far? No. Never ever regretted anything that came out of your mouth? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you interviewed Bob Z years ago. Oh, oh that, that was purposely done. Well, I don't, I don't remember this. Yeah, yeah, that was a Bob Z. Bob Z. Um, did some things on on Facebook, and she says, "I come into Barbados for Admiral." Oh no, you don't give me two weeks to prepare for you. I will cut your ass. So when she came and she started to talk, and she was criticizing Barbados music, by the way, I said to her, "How much Barbados music have you heard?" That was my first comment to her. So you gotta answer that. How much Barbadian music have you heard? She was criticizing Barbadians. She was saying our music was nothing. It was foolishness. It can't sell in the international world and thing. I said, how much of the music have you heard? Same, thing, that, same thing you've been saying? It, it, huh? The same thing that you're saying now? No, no, no. She, I'm saying to, I'm saying to you, Babsy would do anything for popularity. She, she speaks to I'm me now. Admiral. She speaks to me now. Me? Yeah. I, I don't need to do that, Star. I don't need to do that. <laughs> you must know better than that by now. Anyhow. She, she speaks to me now. She ain't talked to me for about three years. That's no problem. But she, she said on Facebook she was coming for me. She had something. She had to deal with me on television. So I tell my crew, prepare yourselves. Today will be a different day. It will not be the same. And she sat down. And the first thing I said, I heard that you said you were coming for me. I hope you got all your facts right. Because I've done my work. She did not survive that interview. She did not survive. You remember the interview? You remember that time? She did not survive that interview. Uh uh. If you come in in my department, you gotta come good. But what she say and what you did portray on TV, it basically looked the same there. Yeah. But that's all right. About, you know the music, how the music is and how this is. Yeah, but the difference between the me and she, thing? the difference between me and Babs is that I don't care if they let me in a party and I don't want no special favors. A lot of them frightened to tell the artist things because they don't want to sit down, but you ain't see to think of any good to do or they let them in. I don't what give he, a shit. What he, what he getting at? <laughs> what, what he, what, what he, I think what, what Farah getting at is that the question he want to ask 
is do you sometimes say things because you know it can be controversial? You can. You can get attention. Of, of course you can. Of course, come on. I'm a journalist for heaven's sake, man. I'm in the media. You don't expect me to say things sometimes that would provoke and, and, and invoke interest. You have to. Who are you? So that's the same thing going back to the all about Asian and Billy Marshall. No. That was a, pro the, a provocation. No, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a question I asked him because I wanted him to deliver the information. He obviously took it as though it was like, so you don't think that I can write for Marshall? Tell me. If you've written for Marshall, tell me. I want to know. No the, the, audience, the audience wants to know. It's not for me to come and tell you. A poor interviewer is somebody who appears in the interview seat pretending to know everything about you. Well, why the hell am I there? If I know everything about you, why did you invite Admiral here if you know everything about me? Jesus Christ, tell the people. Because a lot of people out there were saying they say no. No. When... Hold about ask you that question. Yeah, the man let this start. You can let like when if this was festival stage, you probably be jumping up and say do so. No, you at me. When you come at me and they put a plane in front of you and give you food, you say no, I eat my food, right? And I can, I can drink your water. Okay, you, drink, you drink my water because I got no food again. But in in the future. As you say to youngsters, when they're coming off Festival Stage, they better come to clear. That's basically what you're saying. No, no. Um, if you watch Festival Stage since Hollabar, you would also notice that we had a couple of youngsters on who were extremely green and who you help. Listen, it is not, you're not walking into the lands then. Just, just control, control yourself. We, we, since Hollabar, we've had a couple of young people who, who've come on. Today, we had a youngster. Well, earlier today, we had a youngster who came on of, um, who's never been known. He's never performed on any stage or anything else. And when they, they, they called me and said, Admiral, we got a guy here on. Um, he's just coming to do the interview. I said, why is he only coming to do the interview? He has a song, but he's not confident. I said, no, absolutely not. Tell him, bring the instrumental and let me listen to him before he goes on. Now, what I will do to him, because I tell people all the time, your first appearance is going to determine how long you last. Bajans are unforgiving. So you can perform this song. And at the end of this song, I will tell you if you can do this song on festival stage. And after the first verse and chorus, I said, stop, you're good. You are right, you're good to go. And then I interviewed him about being new in the business, blah, blah. Then I learned that he got two sons in the Junior Monarch Calypso competition. Right? And when the interview was finished, he said to me, he says, you're not the guy people talk about, though. You, you're quite different. I said, no. I just don't tell you what you want to hear. And when you don't tell people what they want to hear, it's then they get angry and upset. Don't come to me like you're not big boss, you're the big superstar, you come to run things. We got interview first because you this and use that. And you should get a call up to, to the events because you do this and you do that. You got to earn your key. You got to earn your key. Continue your questions. Um, thing because you and I thought you were rough on my feathers, but you're good. Me, you're yeah, you good. tell me you say, I don't you know what rough your feathers you want to keep this interview for the level. No, 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 I am not, I am not gonna get here. Mm -hmm. I, and I want to be honest with, with, with the young man. Now, we had an exchange on TV, he was there, he could answer like I did with Salt. You did, you answer. So it's not one track thing here. Hold it back in here. Mm. He's not here to defend himself. So at the same time, though we had an interview and though spirits went in the wrong direction, of course the public did that, I still got to be fair. I still got to be fair to the young man. And, and to be really honest with you, I wish him well. And I hope that the, the, the big up they get off a festival stage, that if we use it now as a platform to jump off into the real star world. The interview Do you really feel that the interview doesn't make he get all this, this push? No, you, know he much, you know how much people tell me What's Hollaback? We never hear what he get. <laughs> you make well, it. Well, <laughs> I, I hear about Hollaback a long, long time. But, but you in the long time, long time before the interview. But you in the business. But that no. You in the business. I know good music. when I hear it. But you say, you say, you say here off you fellas. I ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know good music when you hear it. Yes. You know Hollaback for how long? Um, from since me like drinking rum. Uh, and watching girls. Yes. Right. That's my introduction to all of that. Uh, and and that was for you a nice a big song, big hit. And that and, big, and that and big the DJ mm. really, really impressed the hell out of me. Right, okay, good. To the point where I met when I met Hollaback, he was working behind a counter at an establishment. And I was like, We use Hollaback. And he was I I was starstruck. Same thing with Marzo. I was Marzo starstruck. Worked at the Hilton. <laughs> Go on, them stories I know. I was starstruck. I could tell about many people across the world who would have started like that. Anyway, yeah. but oh. you stay here and ruffling your feathers. Ruffled them. But it had looked it looked as though Salt 
had ruffles and feathers. Not at all. No? Not, not at all. So, and I, so, like, we have... When I say ruffles and feathers, they not get your vex, but you look as though no, 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 that no. exchange was uh, one where no, I was like, salt, go salt, go salt. I like it. Uh-huh. I like it. Salt came back to me this morning. As a matter of fact, if a lawyer died, call Salt and ask him. Salt called the management of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. And Salt said, I want to have an interview with Admiral on his radio show. Now, I will say to you, Saul is one of them young people whom I have married over the years for a reason. I look at lyrical content. Saul lyrically is crazy. Talks. I am not impressed, and I've told him this. I'm not impressed with the music that accompanies his lyrics. And I said to him on radio, you are so brilliant, but I don't hear that brilliance coming out in the music that you do. That takes nothing away from Salt. He's really a brilliant young man. I knew that when Salt came on TV that he was sent to come on TV to try to ruffle Admiral Fett. They sent an assassin for Admiral? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, you say you no know way. Man, you come in, you talk, I come to ruffle you. No, 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 the sent Saul. The oh. sent Saul. But Saul, Saul is one of them youngsters that go head on. Tight. He, had, he has his head on. So I decided, well, let, let, let's go for it for a while. And I went for it, and my producer in my ears, Admiral, come back, come back. You're going too hard, come back. And I like pulling that heat. Now, I will admit, the same thing happened with Hollaback. My producer was in my ears, Admiral, you need to come back. But my earpiece was not working. My earpiece refused to work that day. Your earpiece or your ear? Yeah, the your earpiece. Ear no, the earpiece refused the ear, to the work. Earpiece the earpiece literally did not work. work. Okay. So when, when the interview was over, I went into the crew. She says, but Admiral, I was, I was telling you to come back. I said, but you know what? I'm going to go and get proper equipment in here. Cause I'm not hearing you. Yeah. Now with Salt, she's constantly in my ears. All right, all right. Don't, 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 don't. Ease up, ease up there, ease up there, ease up there. I saw it going on. I say, no, watch your knee, Salt. Uh. And I say to myself, let me tell you, sir, right? I would pull these head things up my ears, right? I'd go after your tail, but I left you. So you saying that you left you me? You know, you saying you ease up officer, 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 you said you were coming back on festival stage for wrong too. He said, boy, I thought about that. I ain't coming. <laughs> I ask him. Oh, only today he tell me, he said, boy, I really thought about that, boy. I, I ain't coming. But I will look real bad if you really call him back in on the mark. I'm going to get another knock out. No, he can't do it, boss. He can't do it. He no, can't do it. No, because, he can't. No, he can't. Because no. you didn't expect him before. No, 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 no. I, I, I thought was sent for me. I knew he was sent for me. So I was all right with that. If he come back, I know he's coming back. He will not leave. They say where he came. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. You don't use level off for this, this, this pursuit you got that you could. I want you to tell all them people out there on Facebook who talking all the shit they talking, right? Mm. Right? I don't really worry about them. Them is hypocrites. Here, Facebook is a beautiful um, social media don't concept worry, really because it allows me to, to see people's heart. See how they're really thinking. See what they want to really tell you, but they, they, they ain't brave enough to look in your face and tell you. So just put it on face, but I don't mind. The one thing I don't like, you gotta be able to tell me that you, you disagree with me without cursing and using all the expletives and getting on though. So from the time you go on that road with me, I block you. From the time you start to curse, I can block you. If you challenge me and we having a good conversation, you going on, you don't have to agree with me. Who the hell am I? You don't have to agree with me. Well, everybody doesn't believe in God. Everybody doesn't believe in Jesus. You know what I mean? Mm. So you don't have to agree with me. But from the time you start to get personal and get into my personal life and go on that road and you're talking about my son this and my son that, you, you overstep your boundaries. I can diss you. From the time you begin to go on the road. And for me, I solve the conversation. I end it. I block it. We will have no more conversation. Because if I talk with Adrian Green, I ain't interested in he offspring or he mother or he father. I'm talking with you. So you got to deal with me. But we, that's how we are as a people. We just get real personal. Well, I, I would like to get personal. Mm. And I hope you don't mind. But we've had a conversation before about the impact of your mother on your life. Mm. I never really, I never forgot that conversation. Mm. Your mother was a very, very, very influential person in your life. Mm. She's a very uh, interesting sounding, but I never met her. Yeah. But um, has your mother played a big role in the kind of person that you are? My mother said one time, I always remember, um, 
when mommy was up and walking and doing all the things, I went by her house and she had some friends at the house. And when I walked into the house, one of the friends said, Jesus says, Admiral, but he's got so much licks at, at crop over with this first stage. And my mother looks at the friend and says, he, you don't know this guy. You see, when I drive out of CBC, when I get in my vehicle and I drive out of CBC, I leave first stage right where it is. Mom understood that. Never went home, never discussed it, never bothered about it. When I walked back into CBC the next day, the raid starts again. That's how I operate. There's certain things I just sort out with my life, and I understand what I have to do to survive. If I worry about everything that people say, blah, 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 I would be a wreck. I ain't got no time for that. So I was happy that she was able to say to her friends, this is who my son is. Passionate about basically everything he does. Because when I get into something, I in it. I, and I, I was thinking today, this is the first time I can say this here. Somebody, somebody, um, very prominent lawyer, said to me at 20 minutes to 6 um, on the morning after the interview with Hollaback that his children were watching it and he said, Admiral, but then there's nothing wrong with that. Why, why are people so personal about it? And he said to me, you know, well, you spend so much time promoting crap ain't funny. And that stayed with me because then I began to do some introspection, some, some real, real introspection. I said, you know, he right for truth, though. I just go on festival stage. I took it. It was a radio program. And I went to CBC Management and I said, listen, we can make a TV program out of that because I want people to see the faces of the artists. And I put it there. I have met lots of hypocrites on festival stage. A lot of them artists out there that smile away and think right on like, yeah, why you know that? I don't really care. But you see, they can't come and tell you because they like the promotion and thing. I know them. I know them like you would not understand. I know them. I do the job because I felt really committed to do it. I am saying to you that I looked at this situation this year and I tell myself, but wait, this is why you really want to continue doing it. I don't know that I really want to continue doing this. I don't know that I want to give up my time. I prefer now to, to go into an area where I could assist in archival material, history of the festival, and doing all types of other things. And I, it was my intention two years ago to start Festival Stage, you know. When I brought on Kurt Brown, the idea of bringing on Kurt Brown was, 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 was that he was taking over. And Kurt Brown went to the penultimate show and looked and tell me that he got a new job somewhere else. I said, but Kurt, this was not your plan. The plan was that because CBC said to me, Admiral, you can't let Kurt do the show on his own. You need to be able to hand it across to him. Because they're looking for somebody who can interview, somebody who could do all types of things in case. So I really brought on Kirk to do it. And at the second last program, the man looked at me and said, he done. He get a job somewhere. I said, oh my gosh, I got up for somebody else. Salt said to me today, and if a liar dying, you could call you and ask you. He says, Admiral, I would like to host Festival Stage for you next year. And I said to Salt, I am seriously considering that you can host this show. Maybe we could do a half season with you, and during the half season, I could tell the people, I am comfortable, I can hand it over to Salt, and Salt would take over. I think that Salt would do a good job. But I also think that we need somebody even younger than Salt to follow on, so that, because Salt ain't got too much, too much longer to go, because Salt all is hell too, right? But you want, you want somebody that will help to, to keep the young people in the midst but at the same time, understanding the contribution of the older generation and the thing. Because you can't go forward unless you know from whence you came. It don't make much sense if you do that. So I go look now to see how deep salt is, if he knows you know, a lot of the histories and stuff that's involved in it there. And then if he can mesh the older people with the younger people, I'm going to have a new horse on festival stage once we can pull it together. And you can go home and go to church and everything, I, and go fishing. I ain't going to church for a fella. Uh -uh, uh -uh. I ain't going to church to pray to the God or now, so don't get tapped with it. The church doing more harm than good, so I stop him where he is. Look how you walk around the road and we're talking about the church. Oh, I ain't care. Really? I ain't care. The church is, the church is just a man standing up preaching, interpreting the, the word. You that, mean that, interpret or just repeat, I don't repeat, know, what I say? I said interpret. Yeah. That you business to yeah. listen to them interpretation, but I know I can pray to my God, though. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can do it personally. To him, I could talk to him personally. I ain't gonna go to church. I ain't gonna go to church. You know, you think you can look at them by a church? I ain't gonna go to church. You? Uh, yeah, oh. you know. Ad Admiral Nelson, 
I think it has been good to have you here on the boiler room. On the other side of the microphone. Man, I ain't even brought a sweat. No, man. You, know, we ain't, we ain't, yeah. you really expect that. You, 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 think, you, no. you, you think we bring you here to sweat? Uh-uh. You know, when the fella's good, man. I, I want to say about this program, though, that I believe um, I'm very impressed with the work, honestly, that you guys are doing. And I will really make some headway into trying to get you guys on a station. Um, I know that the program may have element elements in it that may be questionable, but I still think no, they're questionable. That a lot Some of people stuff, are questionable, but they're questionable. Well, well, you know, you know, if if one person has a question about your show, then it becomes as a, you would say, that them business, that them business. Mm-hmm. But when you go out there you now in the public domain on radio stations that are controlled by the broadcast uh, association of Barbados and stuff, there are some things that you may have to do. It does not mean, but you used to do a pretty nice program, but it does not mean that you cannot be frank in your discussions. A program like this cannot only be left to um, social media at this level. It has to come and meet the people. There are many um, talk programs there who, uh, that are so political, it gives scope for nothing else to be discussed. And you fellas may well find that anybody out there who are sensible could invest in this team and if you continue along the path, you'll be amazed to see where this program will get in about six months or maybe even less. I honestly, with all my heart, feel that you fellas should seriously look at offering this program to a radio station. I really do feel so. On that note. How oh, you, oh, you can warm me up for that, you fellas? Uh, if he's heavy, so. On that note. No, but the truth is the truth, man. The truth, but that's it. No, because we, I think we, we pride ourselves here on the bottom. We said it, we say it every week. When someone comes and sits in this chair, they're a family. And just like in a regular family, everybody may not always agree. Mm-hmm. And the interaction may not always be smooth, but it is always love and respect. So love and respect to you, Admiral, and thanks so much for coming on. To the crew, man. Yeah. Farah, I've been hearing about you for a while. I, yeah. I had an opportunity to listen in to one or two of your programs, so I know what type of person you are. Uh, people like you, uh, the country is afraid of. Uh, because you know you speak was in your heart, and we all we all know the talent that Adrian, brilliant Lord Corrector. Has he ever played a song for you guys to hear? Nah. Yeah, you yeah. see, Lord Corrector. You know about that? Yeah, man. We all been here again, no, yeah, but he, yeah, he, he got he, that he did, a, he did a song talking about he ain't saying nothing. Lord Corrector, you see. You gotta know your stories. You yeah. gotta know your history. As the man said, he know he know music. He know, yo, he know he take, he know he take for children. You know he take from long time. Barbados, he know. But I would say, like you see, that's what you like, like, like you say, you talk about your friends. But this interviews, as far as I see, it, in to make people feel uncomfortable. Like most people think when, when we first was about to do the Sharyan interview, I was like, man, I ain't sure. You know. yeah, but sure, then, yeah. if you come here and I disrespect you, I don't feel. The next show you gonna walk on me. No, the last time I met on Bollywood, room. And this is not my show. This is his show. This is his show. This is his show. You understand? Your special you guest. This yeah, okay. respect. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like you said, when you come here, you're his family. People out there might say whatever. People can say this and people can, because it's all. I always remember my mother always tell me if somebody tell yes and somebody tell no, you have a yes and you have a no to work with. Work with that. But if right. you get more no's than yeses, same wrong, but. People gonna always be human beings. You can't change them no matter how you look, how you how you try to put it. Human beings gonna always be human beings. Like you say, you don't give a damn. Yeah. So why you worry about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Admiral, thanks for coming for the Absolute party. pleasure, man. I see your face, but thing going off. Yeah, there, they, man. that's them, that's they be worrying out. Yeah. They be worrying out. Oh no, but even know I mean five hundred and eighteen we are, but right. that's how it is. But my brother, you got anything else to add or no man, you I think we had, we had an, another good one, episode twenty two, Admiral Nelson. A legend. I got to remember this episode, man. Can you find you true, man, or what you said? Yeah, 22, yeah. remember that? Yeah. 20. 22 with the Admiral. You oh, all ever interviewed Frondell? <laughs> I can not see you look, bro. I can make that look on your face that you don't poop, man. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> no, send me home for this, man. Wait, out and what? Out and bad with the Admiral. See you in the next week. Same time, same place. The ball room. Where's that? Peace.